technique is coming back perhaps. Thank you very much P for giving me uh, something to connect to your presentation with. My name is uh, Karin Lofgren and I'm an uh, architect as well working at a company called AIX and uh, we are about one third working with cultural uh, buildings and uh, two thirds working with everything from small buildings to big buildings. And I will continue to talk a little bit about the census and our very close connection to the material wood. And um, I call that uh, a little bit about the inherent capacities of wood um, and how to merge traditions, technology, aesthetics, possibilities into a sustainable future. But going from these very big aspects, I will go down to the very tiny, close Close aspects of wood. Um, yeah, uh, the, our Danish friends here. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't remember your name, but your question <coughs> is very interesting because what are the connections that we can find between uh, architects and you working with stop back by Engelskam frame tim timber framing uh, because. Both Glulem and CT, they are like engineered wood. You, you take a piece of wood, you cut it in pieces, and then you glue it together again so that that composition can um, be more homogeneous and uh, uh, you are able to calculate the construction and so on. So that's, that's a perfect material to use when you are working with, great, with wider spans and, and so. But what about the material? just wood as it is. And uh, uh, in, in, the f in the text of this um, talk, uh, you were I was asked to give a, a theme. And I, I don't even know what to call wood anymore, because if, if we as architects are talking about wood, we are, it is glue lamb or it's CLT. But what if I want to speak about specifically just wood? I, I mean, we don't have a language for that anymore, I think, in the Swedish language in the construction industry. So that's really a problem, I think. So we have to take that back. So for these kinds of buildings, it's a fire station, it's a school, and it's an office building. We cannot build that in normal framing because the span is too big. But the way we're using wood in these buildings, it really um, gives you a, a, a great impact on the senses and on, on, on the atmosphere. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to try to... Um, talk about those capacities, the qualities that are, are kind of lost, that we don't get contact with when, when we uh, use wood in the engineered mode. And I spent a couple of years in Japan, uh, and I'm not, going to talk, I'm not going to talk about my research there, but I, I was uh, invited to uh, uh, Tatemai, that is, uh, as you all know, because that's what you're, 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 all of you are doing Tatemai as well, because that when you have fabricated uh, uh, the wood in your workshop and then you're going to the site and you're putting everything together. That's a tatemai. And this is uh, one family housing. Um, and this is material that, that the artisans use for building this house. They make a model and then they have a plan. And the plan, you have a grid system. It's very simple. It's, it's like letters and numbers. So you know where the posts uh, you're going to make or and then you have decided the height and discuss it with a client through the model also and, and you use of course the same as in Sweden you use a very little uh, composition of the joinery you don't do this elaborate uh, joinery you can see of Japanese joinery you, that's just a show off uh, when, when you go to the uh, architecture you use the practical most suitable uh, joinery of course so this is a little bit close up. Uh, and this is a building with no ceiling, meaning that uh, the structure is seen everywhere. Because, I mean, you see, uh, now I'm going to show this perfect Japanese uh, surfaces of all, all the wood. But 
If you go to a temple, you dismantle a temple. If you have any building where you have a ceiling, of course you do not uh, put a lot of energy in making the wood perfect on those places where you do not see it. And that, that what I mean that you use the specific uh, feeling of wood not being CLT and not being uh, glued lamp. When you put this, all, all, all the beams and everything will be visible and will be touchable, will be able to feel the smell of, uh, or the fragrance rather, uh, when, when you are in the house. And this was a little bit special occasion because the, the car master carpenter, he, this was a very project where he were handing over the project to the younger generation. Uh, so he was standing back of the site in the shadow and trying not to say anything because he was not supposed to give any comments on this building. So this was the new generation that were there, put this house together. Uh, and working with a mallet, I mean, that's what you did yesterday in the workshop and putting things. So, I mean, it's practically the same. What we are really not used to in building and when we're working with contractors and so on, that is exactly that the wood is still visible. I mean, you're not putting anything on, on top of it. So this, you have to be very careful about the surface. I know that some, somebody yesterday said something about, oh, that's so, it's so difficult when, when you have to have clean straps when you're lifting the, the, the wood up because the, um, uh, it, I don't really exactly remember how you said it, but oh, okay, that strap is it's crystal white and you see the vacuum cleaner here. And of course the vacuum cleaner is so that the uh, artisans do doesn't get any dirt under their feet because if they get dirt under their feet, that will be pressed into the woods and then you have stains in the wood for the rest of the life of the people living in the house. So you really have to have clean feet while you're working. And yeah, no helmets. Um, I cannot explain the scribing of the Japanese, but they, they use a lot of center lines and reference lines. And this is a post uh, going under the purlins and uh, on oh, it's Suki, how do you uh, it, chi Q it, it says on the, on the top that that's the letter chi and the number Q and uh, the number nine so you you know exactly from from these wooden plates where where you put that structure and and so it's very easy to um, to mark the posts and know exactly where they are because when you use a square timber in Japan, when you work on, on, uh, in the workshop, you never put the house up and then put it down and move it. You just uh, measure very carefully all the pieces because you don't have place to, to first erect the house and put it down and then erect it again. And I'm going to show two different kinds that when you use with round wood, uh, you do not do like this. So this is uh, also the same technique of putting clay on, on uh, the inner frame, framing then, or you use gypsum boards if you want to make it a little bit quicker, quicker to put the plaster uh, or the clay rather, not plaster, clay. And this is just a picture from another, but we all, we've seen this, uh, Ulrich, you also showed pictures it's a chona in the middle and, and a yadigana at, at the right and an X to the rest. And this is from a temple renovation. I've been dismantling many temples, putting, um, taking them apart, trying to put, uh, decide which time they are from. And then we use the mark of the hand tools to decide a little bit from what century uh, it, different parts were, were built. Um, but they won't have time for that. So, the Shoin Sukuri and Skiaskuri are two styles of making your craft uh, of architectural styles, and you can could say very shortly, and they evolved at the same period. Square posts um, means that you use the uh, sliding doors a lot because it's least easy to open up your building. You sliding doors when you attach a sliding doors to, doors to uh, a perfect. 
uh, flat plane. But if you use a scarcity instead, you work with round posts. And round posts, then the work site looks, of course, totally different. Here, you, the primary structure you can make at the workshop, uh, and you build it up and you take it down. But then you have to add all the uh, in secondary bearing structures. You have to fabricate them on place because you cannot know exactly how the structure is put together uh, in a millimeter. So you cannot use drawings for, for this and you cannot measure it. You have to have also uh, people working, the, the artisans working on site. So when you have the tatamai of, of the square timber, you, you raise everything at, at once. But uh, if you're working with a uh you also have to have uh, the artisans working on site to get it perfect. And we saw also from the American friends yesterday, and, and I mean, it's the same technique of putting round timber together. So um, the techniques are going the world around. And this is also generation shifts. It's uh, Nakamura Komuten and Nakamura Sotoji. While I was in, in Japan, he also le left the company over to his younger son. Uh, these two techniques of building uh, can be seen actually in the Ethnographical Museum in Stockholm at a tea house called Sukite. And it, it contains both principles. Uh, so any one of you who are interested can go here. And uh, they do have the drawings at the museum, but they don't know where they are. So please con contact me if you're interested in the drawings. Uh, this is the part with the showing scurry with, with, with the square past. And you see that there are, are these glass doors which you can open. So there you can study. And it's made of the Japanese artisans. And they, they shipped the house here for 20 years ago and built it up. And it's been, it's been uh, renovated a couple of times. And this is the other part. Actually, I should say it's, it's the most difficult and most uh, part to, to uh, um, make. And this is the part with the round, the skia, uh, sukuri, the, the round timber. And there are a great variety of timbers used in, in this small house. And this is the backside where, where you cover the, the walls with cypress, bark, and, and, uh, and so on. The gray area to the right is, is where it has a square timber and it's connected, uh, the red one, it's, it's a room where you have the right. So it's very, it's a good place to go there and, and see uh, the differences in, in the architecture and in the, the style of, of the uh, um, craftsmanship. So these are some pictures and um, it's very much about uh, combining different kinds of woods. So. Uh, uh, is a deliberate aesthetics to use the variety as a, um, integrated in the architecture. And um, as you see, you don't want to get anything of the clay onto the wood, so you, you put paper around the wood so you don't get stains on the wood while you're making the, the clay. And the aesthetic is taken from the farmhouses. You see, that's, a, that's a, in the mountains, a, a farmhouse where you needed two windows, you just scratch the, the clay to the side. And so it, it's an aesthetic variation of the common uh, language, you could say. And the material up there, if you have problems with your clay walls uh, not attaching to, to the pillars, that's way is how you can Armera, how do you say that? You, you can strengthen the clay so you connect the clay towards the wood so you don't. Uh, oh. Yeah, thank you. The reinforcements alternatives are up, up there that you could use. So the right one is, is the, uh, the square timbers with more formal uh, way, more straight, and the other one is the one with round timber. It's supposed to be a static which is closer to the countryside. And this is the same, the, the picture alcove, Tokonoma, you could call it, where you have cedar, it's Takayama cedar here, and that is uh, red um, fir. Uh, and to, to, it's round timber, but you have to have it to straight line, so you cut uh, with a plane, uh, so that you can attach this round form towards the, the straight form. 
and this is called takenoko, which is a bamboo sprout, uh, th that form. So you could see the inside uh, of the wood as well. So I think that all these are explanations of different kinds of uh, wood, different kinds of uh, feelings. You could touch it, the surfaces are different, the, co the colors are different, and we have the same variety in, in the natural, um, in, in it, regardless of what country you are in, you have the same possibility to use many kinds of wood. And, and I would say that as architects, we are so bad at this because we just have spruce and fir, we just have CLT and glue lamb. And this is, I mean, we have to learn so much uh, because it's impossible with it's possible with the wood that we are so close that we can touch it to really use the 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 senses and to create something that is much closer to our heart and uh, a greater diversity. These are pictures from Sweden, and I think I mean that was what we talked about yesterday also that uh, to to use a timber for one thing and then you reuse it to another thing and you have the marks left because this piece of timber had a life before it, it ended up in that building. We have the possibility to use wood in different ways, but as architects we have forgot the relation to the forest, to the different species of wood that we have. This is what we've got in Sweden. We have fir and spruce. But we also have elm. This is a sick elm in Stockholm. Last year the city took down 1,400 elms and went directly to a power plant and they just made heat water out of it. And this first you should not take because those are a couple of hundred years old in the Arbisco uh, National Park. But I just mean we have a variety of, of species of, of wood in Sweden that we do not use. And how do we, how do we handle that? How do we get a, a greater variety? This is a uh, ice skating rink and so in Sweden and of course I mean this is for seal tea. Seal tea can be used where that is the, sp the best choice. So that's what it's about. Where is the best choice? I was happy last year or if it was two years ago we have a prize, a wooden building prize, an architectural prize and last year it was actually a barn and I was happy to see that they had, didn't use glue lamp because normally everything will be made in glue lamp also here, but that, that, where, how can we architects get to know that now we are working in a scale where we do not necessarily have to use glue lamp. We are, we are getting closer to the kinds of buildings where we actually have a choice. So there we need all of your knowledge here. So where are those borderlines where we should lift the telephone and call any one of you and say, hey, I, I need help here to see what possibilities do we have. You're here. <laughs> and, this, and it's not just those small buildings. This is a quite, quite big building. In, it's in Austria. It's a recycle, uh, a big municipality, a, a municipality that's got a big recycle, how do you say? center point something and and, and I've got I forgot exactly where so can you help me if you know where this is because I just forgot it it's in Graubünden I, I think some somewhere anyway uh, I showed this picture because the site is in the middle of the forest and they said hey we're building a plant for recycling we have to do something about all the trees we're cutting down so they decided um, that some parts of the building is made in glue lamp, some parts of the building is made in CLT, but where they had the possibility to use the woods uh, that already was on the site. So you see the, under the roof, uh, over the trusses, they, they've just used the, the trees that were all already on the site. And also this construction, this is a composite. It's also used of the, far, of, of the wood that was on the site, but they have, like you do, how do you say, masts on ships, you, you, you sort of glue it together, but on the upper part it's just a trunk. So they had to find out how, how to fix it, so I mean, it, it's not the traditional way to, to um, um, use the frameworking, woodworking, but, but the, it's like a transition between the knowledge that, that w could be possible if we have the right uh, engineers, uh, the right uh, skills uh, that coming from you, 
and also the the possibility to to talk together and to meet and see can we do anything so i mean it's not just small buildings we can also meet together uh, when it's a question about larger buildings so i just end with some quick short note because my time is up no i have two minutes yeah that will be fine uh, this is a brand new bridge and uh, Mona, she's disappeared. Uh, I think it's called Skrona. And now it's another word I don't know in English. Prylpålning. Can anyone help me with that? <laughs> it, it's, it's an old technique. Here it's made in concrete, but, but it used to be that you have oak or fir, I'm not sure. Uh, logs that you sort of press down in, into the water. I mean, I guess that's how you made um, bridges for a long time. So we, we got the old drawings. The, the bridge was never there, but we, it was meant to be there a couple of hundred years ago. And we got the old drawings and now they needed a bridge. So we said, oh, they have already designed it. It, it, but it was in the 18th century. But hey, let's take the drawings. They will work also today. So the bridge is made in fur up here. And uh, it works very well. Um, and this is not far from here in Varnhem. And this is, uh, there's some parts of this roof, which is made in glue lamb, which made me so furious. It, it's made by my office, the office I work at. Because it, that, this is a typical example where we could, why do we use glue lamb in this? this? I think it is, there is a tensile force in this way. It's difficult to understand because it's upside down. But anyway, it's tensile forces in, in this one, uh, because there is a, a walkway which is hanging from, from the roof system. But I mean, the, pro the proportions and this, the, of everything in this house says that this could also be done with real timber, not, not with glue lamp. But um, it didn't turn out that way. Sad, I think. And this is... Um, a very small pavilion for the king for his birthday two years ago um, and uh, for, for him and for everybody else uh, close to Drottningholm at Ohm Holmen who are walking their dogs. Uh, so you don't see it but here, here is uh, up here is, is a copy, a silhouette of the dog that the king has. Anyway, this was also <laughs> Happily not made in glue lamb, and it, it was made on, on, uh, in the workshop, and then it was just uh, re erected at the site, and it just had a couple of days, and then it was here. So, this is a very small project, but I would like to find the link between this one and the really large project that with the municipality where they used the forest on the site as well, and, and to be able to, to be get better knowledge of where am where do I enter the borders where I have more choices to choose any different kinds, not only CLT and glue lamb, and also different kinds of wood. I think we all architects could say that there are very few of us who have the knowledge of, of that area. And to be able to work more in that area, we have to talk more together. And P and I, we have a network. We aim for um, engineers and architects to uh, just get together and talk on different subjects that we find that we have to share knowledge about. So we are inviting everybody of you also coming to this network and, and uh, we'll keep the discussion going and try to find some questions to, to meet together about, to have a discussion where we can learn more, more from each other. So that's, thank you very much.